tonight. How about giving God glory and praise? Amen. It is such a blessing to be here in Kenya. Last week I've been teaching at the school. And I tell you, we have wonderful students. We had a great time sharing the word of God together. And now this is the beginning of our confidence. This is the main reason why I'm here. So, uh, leaders, and members of Grace Bible Church, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And of course, thank you, Pastor Ben, for uh, inviting me to be the speaker. And it is special tonight because my interpreter is one of my viewers on Grace TV. And we have a lot of viewers in Kenya. Some are members of uh, GBC Church. And others are from other groups. And uh, some promise that they are coming on Sunday. I feel like I'm a little bit famous now. <laughs> but if it is for God's glory, it's good to be famous. Because that's the very reason why we do this ministry. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. YouTube, not to make money but to preach the gospel of salvation and to give glory to our God and because I already introduced let's go straight to the word of God let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 We'll be reading verses 18 down to verse 21. Tonight I have been given the theme that says reconciling the world through the gospel. We have to understand that we are going to heaven. If you are saved, you are supposed to be going to heaven. And people are asking why I'm still here. Well, there is a reason for that. God is calling you to be his ambassadors. You are here to represent Christ. And you are here to represent heaven. You have a message to preach. And you have a ministry to do. And so we are going to do this task of saving the lost and edifying the saints. Normally, I preach for 30 or 35 minutes. But this guy next to me is also going to preach the same length of time. So I have to really be flexible tonight. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 18 to 21. The Bible says, Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is that God was in Christ reconciling 
the world to himself. Not imputing the trespasses to them. And has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Again, our theme says reconciling the world through the gospel. But the question is, why reconcile people? Genesis chapter 3 tells us that because of sin and disobedience, man got separated and alienated from God. He was separated from God spiritually. Man died spiritually. He was separated from the life of God. And because of his sin, he could not stay together with God. And then the Bible says he was also forbidden from eating from the tree of life. If you want to know more about that, read Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 to 24. And this spiritual separation is also resulting to physical death. You like it or not, we are getting older. And it's a matter of time we are all going to die. As a matter of fact, every time you celebrate your birthday, you are one year closer to death. And I could not understand why you are preparing cake and party. All of us, we have family members that already passed away. The question is, who's next? The Bible says we are all going to die physically. And then man also was separated from God in proximity or in distance. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, the Bible tells us that Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. They were driven from the Garden of Eden. They were uh, driven out from the presence of the Lord. And the bad news is, we came from Adam. And just like what happened to Adam, happened to us. So we are also separated from God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 down to verse 3. This is our description before we came to the Lord. The Bible says we were dead in trespasses and sins. We walk according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit who works now in us, we are 
operated or working according to disobedience. And, and every day we are fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And fulfilling the desires of the flesh. The Bible also says that we are children of wrath. So we are really in serious trouble before God. Worsening the situation, worsening the situation, being Gentiles is not helping. If you go to chapter 2 of the book of Ephesians, verses 11 down to verse 12, the Bible says, Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by that uh, that is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. And then talking about our past, the Bible says, you were without Christ. As Gentiles, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We were strangers from the covenants of promise. And the Bible says we had no hope and without God in the world. So our past was real bad. But then don't stop there. Don't stop on verse 12. Keep reading. And then in verse 13, the Bible says, But now, there has been a change. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were, were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how far you were in the past. It doesn't matter how dark was your, were your sins in the past. The blood of Jesus Christ brought you closer and closer. Apostle Paul is talking about the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross more than 2,000 years ago. The Bible says Jesus Christ shed his blood to pay for our sins. And with the blood of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of the Father was satisfied. Jesus Christ died for our sins. On the cross, Jesus Christ did not commit suicide. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, it's you and me where the reasons it's because of my sins and your sins that Christ died. Christ died so that our sins would be forgiven. He was buried so that our sins would be forgotten. And then he rose again so that we can have a brand new life. Through the sacrificial offering of Christ. We can be declared righteous. Perfect. 
We are also right before the Father to the point that as if we have not seen at all in our entire life. It's all because of Christ. It's all because of His blood. And Apostle Paul calls this the gospel. The good news. Amen. And he calls this grace. And when we talk about grace, it is the work of Jesus Christ. And because of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we who were called aliens and strangers have been brought near by the blood or by the cross. So people can now become reconcilable. So what to people can be reconcilable. What to what and then those who were disobedient and dead in trespasses they and sins, they can be savable. You got that. Reconcilable, savable. We have become near in proximity and possibility. The reason now people can be saved, not because of religion. Not because of good works, not because of riches and popularity, people can now be reconciled and be saved because of the grace of God. But God requires something from man. Not good works. Our good works are not good enough before God. But God is requiring faith. Or trust. Salvation is easy and free. But it doesn't mean it is cheap. It cost the father his only begotten son. And salvation cost Jesus Christ his own life. And for us to be saved and reconciled, it would cost us something. But don't ask me how much. I'm not talking about your money. I'm not talking about your good works. It will cost you your faith. The grace of God. The, the gift of eternal life. The offer of salvation. Must be received by faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 One must believe in his heart That God raised him from the dead That's God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and The Bible says he will be saved Anyone can be saved now, as believers, we are waiting upon the Lord. If you believe, you are saved, you are sealed, you are secured, and while you, and while you are seated right there, the Bible says you are already seated with Christ in heavenly places. It's just a matter of time. We are going to depart from this wicked and crooked world. And our departure from this earth is our entrance to heaven. 
itakuwa ni kwenda kule mbinguni I'm waiting forward for that day that the Lord will call me home. We are waiting upon the Lord. But while waiting, God wants us to do something. In the time past, it was God that was really doing the work of reconciling people. If you go back to the book of Genesis, when man sinned against God, it was God first who was looking for man. It was him who made a promise of a savior. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. God promised a redeemer. On the same chapter that man sinned against God. Immediately God made a promise of a savior. It was him who took the animal. And, and, and shed its blood remove its skin dry it up and then give it to the sinful Adam and Eve and the Bible says it is still God who wants people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But in the dispensation of grace, God is using the body of Christ to save the lost and to edify the saints. God is reaching out to the world through the body of Christ. If you are a member of the body of Christ, if you are saved, you are part of Christ's body. And God is going to accomplish the saving of the people and edifying of the believers through you and me. Last Sunday, uh, I was asking the believers in Kayuli two questions and I will not spare you tonight. I promise you they are easy questions. Question number one, are you a member of the body of Christ? Number two, where are you in Christ's body? The first question is a salvation question. And it is answerable by yes or no. If your answer to are you a member of the body of Christ is no, it means you are not saved. I don't care if you are a pastor. I don't care if you are a Bible student. I don't care if you are a board member of this organization. If your answer is no, it means that you are not saved. But we want you to be saved. But if your answer is yes, you are saved. You are and you are in the body of Christ. The second question is a ministry question. Maybe you are already saved and you are already in the body of Christ. My question is where are you in that body? 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 18 The Bible tells us that God has sent the members 
Bibi tuambie Mungu ameokoa wale washiriki each one of them katika kipa moja wao in the body katika mwili as he pleased ame amependeso meaning you have a part kumaanisha una sehemu you have a place uko na sehemu mahali you have a function uko na kazi ya kufanya in the body of Christ katika mwili wa Kristo and it's important to know that you are saved na vizuri ni muhimu kujua kwamba umeokoka But it is also important to know where you are at in Christ's body. The moment you know that you are in that part and place in the body of Christ. The moment you know your place in Christ's body. You can function efficiently. You can minister effectively. And you can serve productively. Bearing fruits for God's glory. And if it is necessary. Na kama ni ya muhimu sana. You will be willing to sacrifice. Utakuwa tayari kujitoa, kujitoa. Some of us are serving the Lord complaining. Wengine wanatumikia Mungu wakilalamika. And grumpy. Na wakinumunika. We are serving the Lord as if we are obliged and forced to. Tunatumikia Mungu kama tunalazimishwa kutumika. Oh Sunday morning again. Ah Jumapili Bible study again. Ah tena Bwana tufundishe Biblia. I'll be preaching again. Nitakuwa na mbili tena. I'll be teaching again. Nitakuwa ninafundisha tena. Always complaining. Kila wakati unalalamika. Maybe you have not functioned and ministered according to your place and part in the body of Christ. That's why you are not fulfilled. That's why you are not satisfied. That's why you are not happy. That's why you are complaining. And that's why you are not willing to sacrifice for Christ. That's why you are ashamed. That's why you're embarrassed. You try to sing. But you are not a singer. You are not gifted to sing. You are not part of God's mouth. You are struggling. You are not experiencing that joy in serving Jesus. Beloved, I challenge you tonight. I will I will preach more about this the following nights. But I have a challenge for each one of us tonight. You have to know that you are saved. You have to know that you are saved. At the same time you have to know where you are at in Christ's body. I mentioned before that I believe I am part of God's mouth. I love to talk. I'm fulfilled when I'm talking. Sometimes we drive for hours just to talk. But some of you cannot talk. Some of you cannot stand on the front. But it's okay. The body of Christ has so many parts. Maybe you are a hand of God. Maybe you are part of the eyes of God. Maybe you are part of the feet of Christ. It's okay. As long as you are part of Christ's body. 
The hand is not designed to walk. It can walk for a moment. But then the hand will complain. Because it is designed to share and give. But the feet can walk. Because it is designed to walk. Where are you in Christ's body? You have to find that. Because your ministry and the joy in that ministry and the fruits of that ministry even the sacrifice of that ministry depend on that. Let me close with this point. As Christ ambassadors. Again, if you are saved, you are part of the body of Christ. You have a place in the body of Christ. And that makes you part of Christ's body's work and ministry. For you are Christ's ambassadors. You have a ministry to do. You have a message to preach. It's very interesting. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation and the message of reconciliation. The message is fixed and permanent. And I tell you tonight, do not compromise the gospel or the message. Just for the sake of numbers and numerical growth. The gospel is fixed and permanent. But then the ministry is flexible. Something that we can adjust. Something that we can modify. And so find your place in the body of Christ. Because in that place you have a ministry. And in that ministry you have the gifts. From Jesus Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message tonight. Thank you for the salvation we have in Christ. Jesus. We are saved by grace through faith. And it is just a matter of time we are going to that heavenly place you have prepared for us. And every day we are so excited for your coming. We are looking forward for that day that you will sound the trumpet and you are going to call us home. But while waiting for you, we are your ambassadors on this earth. We are representing you. We are representing heaven. And you have given us a ministry to do. And a message to preach. Father, help us to be faithful to, to be available to be flexible to be committed even to be willing to sacrifice so that people will be saved and the saved will come to the knowledge of the truth thank you for your word tonight 
Sunday kwa neno lako jioni ya leo in Jesus name kwa jina la Yesu amen amen